it's that time of day again. It is a little bit breezy up here, so I'm sorry if you're funny. I'll try and turn around this way. And we have a port in the background. And that can mean we're at Blythe. Much as I love my rocks and my long exposures over the rocks, I fancy something a little different this morning. So I've come down to Blythe Pier. And we're just starting to get some colour. And somewhere over there... Around about there, I think, possibly. It's St Mary's Lighthouse, just to give you an idea. And this pier goes on for a fortnight. I've had my morning constitutional. Walked along the beach to get here and then walked down to the end of the pier. The very far end of the pier is closed for safety reasons. The storms had a bad effect on it. There's a couple of fishermen down the bottom end and it's the most peculiar feeling walking above the sea as the sea's coming in. We're about an hour off high tide, but there's plenty of water around the pier. We have a second pier over here, but that one again is closed, or it's not accessible. And we have kind of a, where are we? There, yeah, like a little mini pier. And there's a couple of bits and pieces on the beach. There is another outfall pipe, very attractive. And there's some groins, and then somewhere around here there's some beach huts. And when the the sun actually popped up, I should go and have a look. So I'm going to get set up. I think what I'm going to try for is, you know, I've already got my camera down here, you might not be able to see it. It's down here anyway, take my word for it. I want to try a very low angle. I might put the wide angle on just to really emphasise the planks coming back at you and leading you out into the distance. There is some colour lighting up over there, which is quite annoying because I want it to be here. But there's plenty of high level cloud. Although according to the forecast, there was no low level cloud today and there's plenty. So we shall see what happens. The clouds are moving quite nicely, it's a bit breezy. So hopefully some long exposures will work out. But anyway, I'm just gonna get on and see what happens. Right, it's getting a bit lighter and we have some colour. So I have got a six stop, a reverse grad and 0.6 soft grad. The sky is considerably lighter, although there is a horribly dark band, which is why I put the reverse grad on. And my composition, I can't move because the wooden boards flex, which is going to upset the exposure. But I'll turn you around and try and show you what I've got. So that's my first composition. The tripod down very low, the wide angle 10 to 20 mil on, so I've got the lines of the pier coming in either side, and we have some high cloud moving across quite nicely and some colour. The other pier is just peeking through on the left hand side. I can't put the polarizer on because the sun's coming in at the wrong angle, but I would love to get the glare off of these. But you can't have it all. So we have the 10 stop, a reverse grad and a 0.6 hard grad on, just trying to even everything out a little bit. I'm going to let this exposure finish and then I'm going to raise the tripod up and see what else we can get.
I seem to remember promising you a stupendous sunrise and I've got all set up I've got my little time-lapse video set up on the the railings on the pier and I put it on the uh, rotating thing that I've got to give a, a nice 180 degree panoramic of the Sun coming up I got to turn it on <laughs> ah, so anyway I've no idea what time we're at it's got to be 10 o'clock because my stomach's rumbling and I've walked down the beach you can see in the distance somewhere over there is the pier that I was stood on and we've got the dockyards and I've seen some images of the beach huts and I thought I'll take a wander down while I'm here but then I kind of got a bit distracted by the groins I don't think I've done any groins I've always been doing rocks while I've been here In the distance, we have... The, I'm not pointing anywhere near the right direction, I appreciate that. There's the wind turbines. We have the sun coming in from the right-hand side. And... I put the 70 to 200 on to get the end of the groins. I wasn't interested in this wooden bit. I wanted the end of the groins. As they go under the waves. The waves roll in and roll over. So I've got the 70 to 200, I'm at a, oh, about 110 mil, I suppose. Um, I'm on 5 seconds and F6.3. I have a 0.6 hard grad on. Are you there? Yes, there you are. And the 6 stop to give me a little bit of motion in the water. So I'm going to trigger this shot and see what happens. Well, what I am finding is I want to focus on these groins. But I also want the wind turbine to be in focus, which is apparently a bit of an ask. I've moved up to, where were we? I was at F9, so I've moved up to F11. I have taken a single shot of the wind turbine and I've focused on the turbine, so this is going to be a blend. And now I'm just concentrating again on shooting the, the groins. And I'm trying to wait for the sun to pop its head from behind the clouds just over there because that puts a nice bit of light on and it also reduces my exposure time so I get oh excuse me there's some lovely waves coming in I also get some really nice action in the water to say I'm not wanting to completely smooth the water out four seconds is not enough in terms of actual brightness of the image But if I go any more than four seconds, I'm going to have to lose the motion in the water. So, the plan is, and I don't know if I can do this while I'm talking to you. Yep, let's just up the ISO to 200. That should allow a little bit more light in with the same shortish exposure of four seconds. All I've got to do now is wait for the light and a big wave to arrive at the same time. And there's a box, I don't know if you can see him. The bloody seagull sat, <laughs> sat on one of the groins. Just stand still. I don't mind them if they don't move about. 